Good evening, folks, and welcome to another edition of An Hour with Bob. Here we are in the middle of June 2022. Unlike these other stations that have, uh, they show 13 episodes or nine episodes and they're done for the season. I'm on, we just began my 30th year, or, or should I say my 30th anniversary was two weeks ago. Does that make it? I've, I've been on 30 years, I've been on 29 years, and I'm entering my 30th year. How does that work out? We'll get to that anyway. <laughs> A anyhow, as I always do, or almost always do, I, I promote people that are Rhode Islanders or former Rhode Islanders or uh, from Mass, Connecticut, New Englanders that uh, are talented, that have talent of some kind, whether it be art, music, whatever. And today is no exception. This man took two trains to get here today from New Jersey New Jersey to New York, or New Jersey to Philly, and Philly to Rhode Island, to spend an hour with Bob. And the fabulous Gabriel is with us, formerly of Rhode Island. How you doing? Good, Bob. And nice congratulations to see you. on 30 years. 30 years. I, when I lived in uh, Rhode Island, I used to look at your program. And, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, you, thank you. You've had thank a lot you. of really nice guests come on. Yeah, I've been fortunate and, with that. I've you. been fortunate with a lot of guests over the years, a lot of good guests over yeah. the years. Yeah, very, very good. Now, it's true, though. You took a, a heck of a trip today, huh? I started off at 8.20 in the morning after getting up at 7 and driving to Atlantic City and getting the Atlantic City Express to Philadelphia, which took an hour and 15 minutes. And then from the Philadelphia uh, train station to, to Rhode Island, and I got in at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. And my brother Michael picked me up. And, and where did Hector fit in that? Hector, I seen him later on, did and, and he, he uh, 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 we, we, we got together later that night. Yeah. Hector's a, a, an interesting guy, is he not? He's Hector, a good guy. Yeah, talking to Hector from Entertainment Resources. There you go. That's right. He has a lot of entertainment resources he in does. his pocket. He he's does. He's very, very good. And he's and, nonstop. That guy works 20 hours a day. Well, you know what it is? He's very conscientious. If he says he's going to be there 10 o'clock in the morning, he's there 10 up 10. I was just going to say he's that. He's very, very good. And he knows how to coordinate things. And, yep. and actually, you had a guest on... Uh, a few weeks ago, Arrow Rose. Right. right. And, you know, he's, he's working to, to get her going, too, with, you know, different things, uh, you know, uh, and entertainment for shows sure. and, you know, expanding on what she's doing right now. Uh, and it's very, very good. So, you know, it's... Uh, Hector, you're out there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hector. <laughs> Give us a little history of yourself and your connection to Rhode Island. Are you originally from Rhode Island? Originally from Rhode Island. I was Where? Born and raised in North Providence. I, 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 I lived North Providence. I went to North Providence High School and graduated in 1966. 66. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then, I went to, uh, then I went to college after they told me I couldn't I wasn't going to graduate because I didn't know what it was like to uh, get out of school at 2.15 or 2.30 it was. Why? What do you mean? I had detention for four years. Oh, did you? Yeah. And then when I graduated... Sounds they, like me. Listen to this one. They wanted me to... T they wanted us kids to take gym with the girls playing really? volleyball, you know, like, yeah. you know, and I, I, didn't, I didn't want to do that. You know, uh, 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 with the girls on one side and, and, and the guys on the other side. But and, like an intramural? And we were doing what, 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 what the girls were doing. So I, I, I didn't feel right doing no. that. So I didn't take gym. And I used to sit on the bleachers with the girls that couldn't because, this, you know, the, 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 the time of month. Right. Okay. And uh, so I did that. So when I graduated, they gave me a, a blank folder, and they said I had to go back to school uh, for, summer for, for two weeks. For two weeks, while the, the while the kids that didn't graduate, another, another one, the graduation class gets out, I think, to about ten days or two weeks earlier right. than the regular classes. Sure. So I had to go back and go to gym for the next week or two that it was, all day do, gym. 
and then they gave me my diploma. Really? Yeah, that was. Well, funny. see, I was under what they called. I thought you were under. <clears throat> I was under the conditional acceptance because I was kind yeah. of a troublemaker. Yeah. And my sophomore year, mm -hmm. that, uh, that was back in the day. There was only three years of high yeah. school. Yeah. You remember they they went to four years of high school later on. They, the ninth grade used to be junior high school when yeah. I was in school. Mm -hmm. And I got myself in some pretty serious trouble my first two weeks of being in high school, and I was uh, um, deemed a troublemaker. So I had a I actually had to sign a contract, conditional yeah. acceptance. I wasn't allowed to go to any school events, which is pretty bad and pretty severe to knock somebody out of uh, sophomore hop, junior prom, yeah. senior prom, mm -hmm. I, class stuff. I couldn't go to anything. Yeah, but I guess I kind of deserved most of it. My brother and myself used to run the high school. So they finally had to separate us. My brother had to go to Johnston High. Yep. They wouldn't allow myself and my brother in the same school system. We, we used to be rowdy, what can I say? But we did, you know something, we never hurt anybody or anything Right, like exactly. That. No, exactly. no Minus fights stuff. and stuff. And yeah, you know, it, it was stupid things. Uh, yeah. You know, we grew our side taps long. Right. Then we wanted to have on our I shoes. I always had long hair. Yeah, me, me too. The principal wanted to cut our hair. You know, you could, you could have had a a shorter haircut, and then the, and Cuban, then the Cuban heels on oh, the, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With, the, with the taps, they make the noise. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I got, I got thrown out of um, confirmation because of that. The taps, yeah. I'm, in, I'm in the church. You know how sound <laughs> echoes in the church, right? Yeah. I'm tapping on the, the, the heating pipe, which ran along the pews, ran yeah, inside the yeah. pew. I'm tapping it. They couldn't tell it initially where it was coming from, and the yeah. nuns are going up and down, <laughs> up and down, looking at everybody's shoes to see who's doing it. Hmm. And they caught me and they threw me out of there. So I had to make it the next year. Yeah, those were the those days. Those were the days, exactly. Because nobody yeah. really, like you said, you know, we weren't shooting people. Nobody was stabbing yeah. people. It was fun. Well, it's stuff. innocent things. Goofy we're stuff. going through, you know, going, you know, we're kids. You know, what are you going to do? Uh, but, but anyway. We did some goofy stuff, that's yeah. all. Just all goofy right. stuff. Now, now they're shooting people. Well, we're not goofy anymore. So no, we're not. So, anyway. All right, tell us a little bit about your connection to Rhode Island, other than your school. Well, the, uh, you know, I was born and raised here. And, uh, now, was you uh, and your brother, just the two years? Yeah, just my brother, Michael, yeah. and uh, Lucky you. I had eight brothers and sisters. Wow. Yeah. How did your mother keep track of you guys? Difficult, especially when my father wasn't there. My father died when we were all kids. Oh, we are all young when my father died. Yeah. The oldest was 13. You know, that's a hard thing, you know, to go through life, you know, and, and you don't have one of the parents with you because, right. because of that, you know. And, uh, well, it's a lot you know. different than, like, nowadays people say, oh, I don't have a, a, a father. No, but the father's still around. He's just yeah. not in the scene. Yeah. You know, whereas my dad yeah. was six feet under. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit different, I think. It's a lot different. Yeah, you look at things different, you know. I, uh, I think. Yeah. Now, when did you start playing uh, in a Well, band? I started playing when, when I was very young. My brother and myself, excuse me, uh, well, actually, let me start here. My father used to put linoleum down on, on floors. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. When he first started. And he did a job for an old professor Yep. Okay. Who taught music. And the professor gave my father a saxophone and a clarinet. As payment? As payment. Wow. So my father, you know, plus a few dollars. Sure, okay. sure. But your father's going to So what my father do brought the instruments home, so my brother grabbed the saxophone. Right. And I got the clarinet. Got the clarinet. So I learned on the clarinet, and my brother learned on the saxophone. saxophone. When we were like, I, I was 10, 10 years old, 11 years old. And when, uh, so we started getting pretty good at it, you know, because we took lessons from sure. this old professor. And he showed us the old way, the Safagio, and you, you know what that is. No. We, well, with, with the music reading of the notes going with your hand and yep. et cetera. But, but any, anyway, uh, we started playing at the ham and bean suppers and the PTA meetings, because oh, the, yeah. the principal wanted us to play. So my brother and I used to play a, a couple of songs, you know, on, on, the, uh, on our instruments. And then I graduated to, uh, to this playing the saxophone because somebody told me one day, hey, you play that licorice stick pretty damn good. And I didn't like that term. The licorice the, stick. The, huh? the licorice stick, right? So I didn't like that. <laughs> so you want to change instruments. Yeah. So then I started playing the saxophone, and, 
And then that was my main instrument. And then in later years, I got really, really good at it. Yep. And I played with some famous people. Uh, may I mention a few? Yeah, well, um, yes, of course. I, I played with uh, uh, Wilson Pickett. Wow. Did, 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 yeah, the Land of the Dials and Dances. I played with Gary U.S. Bonds. I played uh, with uh, uh, Tommy James for a little while. Uh, Tommy James and Shondells? Yeah, yeah. When they did Money Money on the record, there's no brass on that. But but when we did the live shows, I, I was in the you, brass you section. We're going like this here, Money Money, like that. Yep. Yeah. I did that for a while. Then, then the Ides of March wanted my, uh, me to play with them when they had vehicle. And I told them, well, I, I, uh, I, I can't go unless you take my brother with me. Uh -huh. Because he played the, the organ. Yeah. Oh, he went to the organ? My, yeah, my brother ended up, ended up playing the organ after him. And they said, well, we don't need another organ player. I said, well, then I'm not going to go with you guys. No kidding, and, yeah. And, oh, we need you bad, right? Uh, no, so, so I didn't. Yeah, and then... Before that, my brother and myself had a little trio called the Charles Slack Trio. Yep. He played the organ, and uh, a gentleman, Bobby, uh, uh, we had uh, played the drums. Yep. And I played the saxophone and sang. You know, different things like that around there. We used to play, I don't know, what, the old Erin Lounge, the Pirate's Den. Do you remember I remember that? the Pirate's yeah, Den. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. about the, the Edge of January? Do you remember those Yeah, clubs? the Edge in January. In Pawtucket? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The purple kitten down in um, yeah. Block Island. Then I played. Here's an interesting story that that I got to share, and a lot of people don't know this. Okay, I played with a gentleman, uh, Fat Man Wilson. Remember Fat Man Wilson? I, I know the name, but okay. I can't say it. We played at a nightclub called the Jail. Was yes, nice. Fox yes, Point, the yes. Jail. Okay, I do remember that. That so, was that, that yeah. preceded uh, shooters. Yeah. So we, we were the house band there every Friday and Saturday night. So we were told by the management that the next week coming, a special English group is going to be coming to play. Right. So my band, a Fat Man Wilson and the band that I was playing in, uh, would start the first set, then the English group would come into the second set, then we'd play the third set and the English group would play the fourth play the set. Fourth set. Well, okay, that we came, so now we're, that's the night that happened. Uh, it's, it's, it's going on. And I try to understand these English people, but they had such a heavy accent. Right, exactly. And, uh, you could hardly yeah, understand them. Right? I have trouble watching shows yeah. with English speakers, English actors. Yes. Yeah, but let me tell you this here. I'm going to come to the punchline. So, anyway, uh, so we didn't know the name of the group until uh, uh, that night and everything. Guess what the group's name was? Led Zeppelin. Cut it out. We opened up out. for Led Zeppelin. Wow. And Led Zeppelin. Played at the jail? The first place that they ever played in the United States was at the jail that night. Cut it out. That's in, uh, the, that's in, the, uh, in the record books. Wow. India yep. Point Park. In, it, yep. They played at the jail. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. then the, the, and then after that, they went up to Boston and things started exploding for them. Led yeah. Zeppelin. Oh Led my Zeppelin. God. Who was the lead singer for Led Zeppelin? Uh, what's it? Jimmy Page. Pa Page. Yeah. And I met Jimmy Page late, later on in life because <clears throat> I was living in Reno, Nevada. Uh, for nice a sound. Time, and I was renting uh, uh, a unit uh, from his girlfriend, uh, uh, Diane. And I met him. I, br I brought him back to the, those days. Yeah. Uh, that you know, that, that when they first started in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Well, how cool yeah, is that? It's a true, true story. A lot of people don't know that. Very true. Well, that's something on me. I didn't, I thought for, over these years, you figure I, I, that would come up. No, no. But I do remember the, the jail. jail. I mean, I, I remember going to the jail, yeah. actually. Yeah. And then I had, a, I had a rock and roll band in between these years that went on, and we, we, we played at... Uh, what was the name of the place? Uh, what city? You, you just mentioned a couple of them. It was, it was the living room. Oh, yeah, downtown Providence. Uh, yeah. We opened up for Bon Jovi when he first Really? Had, when they had Runaway. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, I seen Bon Jovi here, yeah. and I saw them in Boston. In fact, yeah. I was on stage with them the, the entire show one, yeah. one night. Yeah. They, 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 they were good. They were good right from the very beginning. Yeah? At bon Jovi, yeah. yeah. And they're out of Jersey, right? Yeah, they're out of Jersey now, yeah. 
So you've done it pretty well. In fact, I understand Wilson Pickett comes in here somewhere, doesn't he? Yeah, I play with Wilson Pickett. When I was going to school, you know, I'm, I'm going back and forth a lot. Sure, okay? sure. So that's okay. Try to understand, you know, <laughs> time goes <laughs> by. We're old. <laughs> time goes by. But I, I went to uh, Berkeley College of Music sure. uh, to get uh, professional training and uh, more, you know, more professional, you know. But I was good before I even went, went over there. But uh, I was practicing in the practice room, and I hear a knock. You know, they got these little practicing rooms that, yep. you, that you could practice in. During, at, at Berkeley? During, yeah, at, between classes if yep. you wanted to. And uh, it, was, it was the saxophone player for uh, Wilson Pickett, and he says, I gotta talk to you. What happened was, when the Land of a Thousand Dances happened to be on the radio and everything, uh, the saxophone player's father was, was dying and he had to go to Jamaica. Right. So he said, we're looking for somebody to fill, learn, in. To fill in, to play the solo, like the record and all that. Wow. So I had to learn it and everything. I, I played with them for a little while. Yeah. So you, go, you went on tour with them? Yeah. Really? Yeah, for a little, yeah, for a little, wow. Yeah, we played up at the Sugar Shack. I remember up, that too. Up, up there, yeah. Now, uh, how about the Four Tops? I, the story could be this big, but I'm going to, I'll condense no, it. No, no, you can it. you can elaborate. You got an hour with Bob here. Yeah, you got All a little right. time here. This isn't a short short segment. This got to be a long segment. I figured it would have to be. When I was in Las Vegas <clears throat> and I was performing out there, I had an agent. Vic Katoya was his name. Vic, he's no longer with Vic us. Vic Katoya. Yeah, yeah, very very good agent. He rem uh, he reminds me a lot of. Uh, uh, I mean, Hector reminds me a lot of him, right. uh, about him. And he said, uh, come on, uh, we're going to go see the Four Tops tonight because they were playing at the Hilton. And we went to see the show, and then he says, come on, I'm going to take you in the back and meet them. We went in the back, and I met the Four Tops, right. Levi and Opie and, and, and Lawrence. And they left... The show left such an impression on me that I went back home. Back to, to Vegas? Where, to, no, 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 I, I, I mean in, in Las Vegas. In Las I Vegas. went back home. Excuse me. I, I lived in Vegas for a while. And, and I went back to, to where I was living. Right. Let's put it like that, okay? And, and uh, I stayed up all night, and I wrote a song called Sexy Lady. Oh, really? So the next morning... I didn't sleep. You wrote it overnight? One yeah, night? I wrote it overnight. I had a little Casio keyboard. You know the little, little yes, ones? Yes, yes. And I had a condensed tape recorder. Those little <laughs> condensed tape recorders. <laughs> so I'm playing it and singing it in the, in the cassette tape recorder. And at 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm rapping on Lawrence's door, who, who I met that uh, uh, night, night in, in the back. And then, you know, I had a drink with him and everything. Yep, yep. And, uh, I told him I was going to write him a song. He said, well, let me hear it. I went and knocked on the door, and he, I woke him out of bed. He says, this better be good. When he heard the song, I like this, he goes, yeah, this is us, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And one thing led to the next. And then uh, we, we recorded the song, and it came out uh, on, on, a, on a CD, and, and uh, it was, uh, I don't know what I want to say, it was number one in England, and it didn't do too too much in in, in the United States. Right. And then it was in the movie uh, Swimming Upstream when uh, 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 that was uh, let me see when that came out about seven years ago. The movie it was on it was on uh, the Lifetime and, right. and, and and you know cable yeah, and. and and it's at the very beginning, the, the song that's being played. But that was the last song that the original Four Tops ever sang in a professional studio for a song to be released for the general public because Levi died right. and Lawrence got sick and uh, uh, there's only one left. And it's, it's Duke, and they still go around. As Duke, the four Duke, tops. Duke, as the four tops, they yeah. go around. <laughs> but in other words, they, they, they were something else. They, I could tell you, the, 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 
uh, when they were, when, <laughs> when the song was being recorded in the studio, uh, Levi didn't know the words because he had a, a couple of drinks in him. Right. So I'm standing near a microphone with him and I'm pointing out all the words to him. I had a, actually before that I had to write out all the words right. and and go you know go like that and that's, that's so you were his teleprompter. Yeah, teleprompter. Yeah, yeah. They're nice. They were all nice guys. Yeah. Wow. So I had a wow. lot of experience with them. Yeah, they were pretty cool. Now, how yeah. long were you in Vegas? No, you were in Reno first, right? And then you went to Vegas, or no? While I was some, some I I was in Vegas maybe. 20 some odd years on on and off and then I lived up in Reno uh, for two years right up Lake Tahoe that uh, well Lake, I really like Lake yeah. Tahoe been and there I, several times yeah I used to fly back and forth when I was I had to do do some stuff really in, uh, in Vegas yeah yeah it's a, that's a nice area you know and uh, well, I'd rather have Tahoe than Vegas it's, it's weather wise oh yeah Especially in the summertime, I, cu I couldn't handle that 115 degree heat. Yeah, but you know something, Bob? It's funny, you, know, you see how it's warm here now, and then the fall comes, and then, it, then the winter comes, the yep. snow and the ice and all that. Well, you grow into it. It's not always 115 degrees out in Vegas. Uh, like, when I, was, when I lived out there, I, I can remember in, in January, okay, uh, uh, there was ice right. on my windshield. Yep. And it did snow, but it, but it all melts by right. the time well, it's done. Well, what, what they call the high desert, right? Yeah. And there's ice on the sidewalks, some of the sidewalks. Right. Okay. But that's at night. The daytime. That's on, the daytime it, 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 in the daytime, it could be 80, 85 degrees, right. but then it'll drop down right. to like, 30 degrees. At night, it's a yeah. big, the, the big swing. Yeah, big big swing. That's in the winter. Good word. Yeah, in the winter. In the winter. But when it's 115 degrees uh, in the summertime, you could guarantee at 12 midnight it's 105. I know. It doesn't. It doesn't cool off. I know exactly it why cool I don't. Off. I wouldn't be able to hear. Even though they say, "Well, it's a dry heat. It's a dry heat." No, it's not. Yeah, and, and something else. What you have? Uh, anybody that goes to Las Vegas. Uh, in in the summertime, like like now, you know, it, it's funny. You you really don't sweat, you know. Right. Uh, how can I put it? But you have to watch out. You have to drink a lot of water because right. you could get dehydrated very quick. But that sounds weird. What I just said. You don't sweat, but you get no, you dehydrated. Do, you do it, sweat, it's but a it funny... burns. It, I think you do sweat, but your sweat yeah, it, but it, it dries. It, yeah, it uh, evaporates immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't drink, you're going to get dehydrated. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, you know, drink water is. and don't worry about it. Everything's air conditioning. Yeah, I know. And, and it's and it's funny. When I first went out to Las Vegas, I was a kid. I graduated from high school. I told you in 1966, and I went to live with my grandmother and grandfather uh, uh, that lived in Arcadia, California. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, and for for about a year until my mother wanted me to come back home. Sure. That was, and I turned 16, because when I graduated, I graduated at 15. I had skipped the second grade. Right. So that put me ahead. So I went out there and, and uh, to uh, Los Angeles, and then I got my first driver's license in California. California. So my f grandfather said to me, he says, tomorrow you're gonna take us to go to Las Vegas. You're going to drive us out there. Nice. So, that's a I bit of a Las drive. Vegas, too. I heard about that place. Oh, really? You this know? is when you're, what, 16? Yeah. So, we did. We got in the car and I drove. But oh, it's so a kind of an easy drive because yeah, it's, it's a straight it's, it's, dead, a, it's about straight. three hours. Yeah, but it's a straight shot. There's yeah, nothing in the way, there's no, yeah. no intersections. Yeah. But it's nice. It's, it's yeah. nice scenery. Yeah. And, and uh, so, we drove out to Las Vegas and I went in. Uh, my my grandma and grandfather stayed at at the Horseshoe, on Fremont Street, right, right. down downtown Las Vegas in Fremont Street. Uh, so they're playing Keno, and I'm sitting there, right? And my grandmother says, "You want to have a glass of wine, right?" So I had a glass of wine, right? I, and I said, "Grandma," I says, 
I'm getting bored sitting here. You know how the keynote works. You sit there and you see the numbers. Right, you know, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm seeing neon lights. I'm seeing people walking around. I said, Grandma, I want to take off for a little well, bit. the okay? action. She said, well, you, she says, you got your key to the hotel room, right? No way. And I says, yeah, I have it. Okay. She says, okay, you come back to the hotel and we'll, we'll, we'll eat. We'll go out to eat tonight, right? Well. So, she, wait a minute. She let, uh, let's say, a wild man, 16-year-old, yeah. uh, yeah, but I, on his own. You have to understand, I looked a lot older than, <laughs> than, than, than what I was. Right, right, okay? right. I, I did. So anyway, I took off for two days. No and way. And didn't come back. She had the cops, everybody looking for me, right? And I, had, I did nothing but win. I had a suit jacket on, okay? See, I, I, I dressed a little bit older. Right, like right, that. yeah. And she, when I w walked into the hotel room, she gave me a whack and knocked me across the... The, the, the room, the room. Across the room. And I said, no, no, Grandma, you don't understand. I go like this with my jacket. I got all kinds of chips from all the casinos that I was in. Really? Yeah, I did good. I did good. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but... <laughs> but know. that's why you got to give us, yeah. just the yeah. chips. That's all you did? Yeah. But, uh, you know, but I toned down since then, so anyway. But at 16 years old, I can imagine yeah. how yeah. I'd be in Las Vegas with all those showgirls and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd be... Well, nobody really carded you then. This was years ago, sure, you yeah. know, so it was a lot easier to, you know, to, to circulate like that, <laughs> right? So I don't know. But, uh, now, what, what popular radio groups did you have the opportunity to play with? Well, the, you know, Wilson Pickett, Gary right. U.S. Bonds. Uh, 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 Gary U.S. Bonds? Yeah. What song did he do? I remember him. He did... Uh, what, quarter to three? Oh, yeah. Quarter to three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quarter to three. And, 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 and another one, If yeah. you want to be... Happy with the best of your life. Uh, he, he was a character. Yeah? Yeah. He, he, uh, he didn't have a, his own band. He, did, he, he used to go to concerts and shows like uh, Chuck Perry used to do. Just, just pick up a band that, that was there. Tell the promoter, really? listen, uh, 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 this is what I need. I need four pieces, and that's it. No rehearsing, nothing. They well, just go how up did there. they Because all his songs are three, three chords. Oh, yeah. C, C, F, and G. Right, right. You know, yeah. so anybody that knows anything about music can just follow him. And that's, really? Yeah. But I, but I played the sax, though, for him for a little bit, you know, for a few shows, yeah. And speaking of... Uh, I understand um, he was a pretty tough guy to deal with, though. Um, yeah. Um, what's his name? Now you made me forget there. Wilson Pickett, Gary no. Smith, Tommy James. No, the, um, oh, God, now I can't even think of his name. Oh, well, I think it'll come to you. It'll come back to me. All right. He, I know he was bad. I know I saw him at, um, in Cranston. He did a show at uh, the gazebo of all places in, in Cranston. Yeah. Uh, the, the song that they use in the, in the, uh, um, Back to the Future, uh, Chuck, Berry. Chuck, Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, yeah, Chuck Berry. I remember him up there doing this thing. Like you said, yeah. he plays with uh, whoever's around, the, the band. They just bring in a band to play with them. And he was singing, and somebody was in front of him with a video camera, and he's yeah. videotaping, and he stopped. He stopped singing, dead in his tracks. And everybody was like wondering what's going on. He goes, yeah. I am not playing another word until that... I get that videotape, mm -hmm. and he was serious. He didn't. He didn't want anybody videotaping, copyrighting, you know, stealing his, his music, his yeah. performance. And they they gave him the they gave him the tape, mm -hmm. and put the camera down before oh. he he would play anymore. And this was in an open outside venue, yeah. a free venue. Hmm. I, I thought that was a little strange. I have a little story about him, and my experience with Chuck Berry. Want to hear it? Sure. Okay. It was uh, a New Year's Eve. I, I was playing at Caesars, and I got done at 10.30. Yep. Okay. And I went over to the MGM where the Four Tops were playing because I was working with them at the time, you know, with the studio, and they gave me an all, 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 access, all pass. access pass. You could go anywhere. So I'm walking around. You know, in uh, in 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 the uh, MGM, and uh, there's a guard, 
you know, standing near the door, and he saw me with with the with the pass, and I went I went in the door thinking it was I was, you know, gonna go backstage, you know. I'm walking out there like this. Yeah, I walked out on the stage with Chuck Berry. Playing. No way. Everybody was looking, right? No way. And, and he's doing that, the, the, yeah, the thing yeah, how yeah, he does, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went like this here. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> everybody. It's a wonder he didn't flip all that. Yeah. No, no, he was, they were laughing. Really? Yeah, yeah, that, that really happened. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, because I had the all access. Yeah, 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 exactly. That was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what is the what is this thing about the uh, the golden platinum? Well, album? I I, I co-wrote a song with the late Jimmy Crane that lived here in Rhode Island. Jimmy Crane. Yeah, yeah, he's a famous songwriter. He he lived in in uh, off of Charles Street here in uh, uh, Rhode Providence, Island. Providence, North Providence. Pro Providence, and I did a song with, with him uh, with uh, somewhere Elvis is smiling. I'm the guy that said that Elvis Presley was still alive, and, a, and he was seen in a red Ferrari in Peoria, Illinois. No way. Oh yeah, I'm the guy that started that whole thing. That made in international news. <laughs> I don't know if some of you people remember that, but I, I started that whole thing. Really? Yeah. Now the question with, is, with, did with, you really see him in a red Corvette? Sure I did. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. <laughs> but but anyway, yeah, and, and yeah, I got a gold plan on an album out of that, and then single of the week, and one of the most entertaining albums of the year from Cashbox, which, which is, was which, which is which, which is Billboard, which is now Billboard, the Billboard magazine. Yeah, yeah, right? I've been in the, the few times in, in there, yeah, in the magazine. Yeah. So, so you you sing, you produce, you write. I do it all. The if package. I have to. If you have to. If I have to, yeah. So you can do it by yourself then. Mm -hmm. If you had a piano over here right now, I'd play her a song. Really? Yeah. See, that's what I miss. I miss yeah. the, the, the old set, the old studio yeah. with, the, with yeah. the piano in there. Yeah. When I used to do shows down at the Warwick Mall, we used to have a baby grand piano at yeah. our disposal. Yeah. And we could do a, do a song right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, who have you played with locally? Have you played with any of these bands locally? Yeah, I had, when I was first starting out, years ago, uh, there was a group called the Soul Sensations. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, that was the group that I was in. Oh, really? The, 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 I don't know if there's another group called Soul Sensations now, but I'm talking about 35, 40 years ago. Wow. Yeah, we used to play uh, down West Warwick. Uh, uh, there was a club down there that we played a lot. And, and, and that club where where that uh, unfortunate fire took place years ago. Yeah, we played uh, the station. There. The uh, station nightclub. Yeah, the station nightclub. And uh, you know, I with with my brother and Bobby. Oh, Hamburg was down that way too. You remember yeah. that club? Yeah. And the Copper Fields was another one. Yeah. Yeah. And the Copper Penny was another one. The Copper Galley. Copper Galley. Copper Galley. Yeah. I said the Copper Penny. Copper right? Galley. Yeah, I played played there too. So, yeah. Yeah, those were the days. Yeah. Well, now music doesn't. The the, the live acts, local live acts. Yeah. They they have trouble. They, they you know. They well, don't. where are they going to play today? I know that's you the know, point. You know, there's not enough places to support bands around here, and and uh, it's it's tough. Uh, you know what they do out in Las Vegas now, like in the lounges. Right. Before they used to have a band like me, I, I had a ten-piece band out there, and I played at the Sahara Hotel, in in the, in the Congo Lounge. Yep. And you had to be good to, to play in there. I'll but, bet. But now what they have in, in the lounge, they have like, uh, a, like a trio, and people are playing with the soundtracks. Oh, really? But it, but you want to know something? It, it's entertaining. And it, it sounds good because right. they're professional soundtracks that they, the, somebody might be playing the, 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 actually playing the guitar with the track. It sounds good, but, but it's not like having a band playing, you know. Well, and the, what the problem with that is it kind of takes away from the, yeah. the, the musicians. It takes yeah, their, yeah, it their bread and butter away from them, yeah. right? Yeah. Because, I mean, I know, I know a few groups that, that play around here, mm -hmm. and they're very good, but there's, there's so many places you can make money around here. Yeah. I mean, they don't pay these bands anything nowadays. No. no. I, when I had, I had a place in the 80s, I, I think I played a, paid them more back in the 80s than some of these people get paid today. Yeah. 
Now you still got some of the bands like uh, um, the Brass Attack and uh, bands like that. You remember a group called uh, um, uh, Black and White was one. There was another. There was another band. Um, the Royal Coachman. Oh yeah, that was a that, big group. Yeah, well that was best. Was that based after the the club, the, the Royal Coachman? I don't know. Did that have anything to do with the? Wasn't it Tiffin or something? I don't. I, I don't know. Oh, I remember the band though. I do remember they, the they, band. They, well, the Royal Coachman, well, they were the number one band around at the time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you know mm -hmm. who's, who's still playing? Is there's, there's a, few, a few of the old bands. Steve Smith and the Nakeds are still Steve around. Steve Smith, yeah, and the Nakeds, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. There's a band I really like. It's been on my show a couple of times over the last several years. Got uh, a, a Russian uh, lead singer, uh, woman, and mm -hmm. she's phenomenal. And she's one of the few people I, I see that can dance and jump around. And yeah. she doesn't lose the, the vocals there. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. as you know, that's hard to do, to, yeah. to sing and, and jump around at the same time and not be out of breath, <laughs> right? And she's not, a, you know, she's not 20. And she's, you know, a little older than 20. She's not old, but she's a little older than 20. And uh, she's, she's phenomenal. She's a performer, and she's yeah. good. She's good at it, too. It's called Rugburn is the name of the band. Well, when people see a lot of... Uh this dancing and singing at the same time, like you see on these music awards. Yeah, that's... They're, 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 they have the microphone on, but it's very low. Right. Because they already got the voice keyed in on, right, on, right, on the track. Right. They're lip-syncing, And that's why really. it's like, hey, everybody having a good time, you know? Right. But, but, well, the mic's on, and plus they got the engineer that knows when to, to, you know, to, to boost it up. Yep. You know, yeah, because, they, they bring you it up so when they, like when they, when they, Yeah, you can't you, dance you like Janet Jackson like and... Uh, uh, some of these other singers, yeah. you can't jump around the stage like that. And, no, no, and, you and be doing the can't catch your breath, you know. And uh, you know, it's 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 entertaining. It's show business, right, right. And what what is show business? How much you can get away with, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's so many of them. How many? Well, who got caught? Remember Millie Vanilli? Millie Vanilli, yeah. When, when they got caught back in yeah. the day, you know. That's a funny thing that happened. My, my take on that whole situation is, is that uh, if I was one of those people, uh, Millie v Vanilli, yeah. I would have went up to get the award and say, you know, remember they got the Grammy Award, right? right? Yeah. When they had to get up there and they, they, they received it and everything like if it was really them that, that was saying it. Well, if that was me, I would have went up there and I would say, listen, this is, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. But entertainment is, is entertainment. Uh, 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 we're not the singers. This award belongs to the people who did it. And, and we're not singing on there. Wow. You know? Yeah. And, and I would have admitted it rather than coming out the way it did because they got blackballed. Oh, they got ruined after you know? that. But, but they could had, they sing? Mm -hmm. Could they sing? I don't know. They were good looking right, yeah, guys, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, they, but but I think that that they 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 blew the opportunity there by by not saying that right. and, and and people would have respected them a, a oh, lot I more. Oh, I agree. I agree. And then I think one one of them committed suicide or something. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But over overdosed or something like that. It wasn't a, it wasn't a good thing, you know. But uh, yeah. That's uh to even think of well, first of all, how do, how does how do you get up every night to do the same thing every night? That's got to be tough. Well, how many times has uh, Tony Bennett sang yeah. sang uh, "I Left My Heart in San Francisco"? Right. You know, it just comes. You know. You but that's only it. one song, and, that, and he doesn't he didn't do a lot. I mean, yeah. a, a band to do like like these rock bands yeah. jumping all around the stage. Every, yeah. How, how do the Rolling Stones do it? Those guys are, are ancient. They're, they're still going strong. They, well, they're all in the 70s, right? Yeah. They, they lost one, right, recently? Yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah. But they're they're all like 74, 75 years old? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't get it. I don't get how they can perform like that every night. I guess yeah. that's why they're, they're, they're using, in some cases, mm -hmm. some of them take drugs or, or booze yeah. or whatever to, to, to get up. Because you can't, it's tough to be on all the time. It's, mm -hmm. It really is. It's got to be tough to be 
ready to go all the time. When I was performing, I always get a little bit nervous before you go on. But well, that's good though. That's expect. Yeah. That's you. You should be getting nervous. But the minute you walk out on the stage, it, it's a, it's a whole different. It goes trip. away. Exactly. It, it goes away, and. Uh, uh, I never drank or, or, or did anything like that to go perform. I've known people, I've seen them do it, right. you know, but, but uh, you know, you gotta have confidence in yourself. And if you have confidence in yourself, you don't need to do stuff like that. Right, you right. Know? So it's unfortunate that that happens to people, but what are you gonna do, you know? Yeah. But to think, you know, that when they, I don't, anybody, I'm, I'm sure anybody having to do that all the time. You're not feeling yeah. well tonight, but oh shit, I gotta get up there. I gotta, oh, excuse me, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta get up there and I gotta do this gig. Yeah. Or your, your aunt died or your mother died or something. Yeah. You gotta get up there and still yeah. do the gig. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, well, that's, that's, so it's not easy at times. Well, now they got. You could have an argument with with your wife and a if you're, if you're a comedian. How do you go make people laugh? Right, right, <laughs> right. Exactly, exactly. Or, or worse, you know, somebody dies in your family. How do you how do you yeah. go make a, make but jokes the, after that? Yeah. You know, that that's yeah. what I mean. It's, yeah. it's, no, I, I mean, it, it's not all all uh, guns and roses. No. You know? No, it's not. No, it's not. No. But anyway. So what are you up to now? Where where are you off to now? Well, I got a couple of things. Do you want to, should I touch upon this or this? You take it. Start through. whatever you want with. I have a song that I wrote. Uh, it's called Fire. Fire. I just signed up with uh, Phoenix Records uh, okay. last week, yeah. And uh, they're, uh, they're going to be distributing it all over. And uh, maybe we, we could play a little bit of it. Uh, we're going to play some yeah. of it. And, uh, you want to play it now? It's up to you. It's your show. Well, we can we can play that now, can't we, Diane? All right, we'll be right back. We're going to hear a little bit of fire. Fabulous Gabriel, you just heard him. 
Fire. Now, how did you come up with that song? Uh, you, how did you wrote that song and you produced that song and you sang that song? Well, it's, it, it just comes to me. You know, it's, it's how, how could I say it? It's a divine intervention. <laughs> it, just, it just came to me, fire. And I was, was, What's it about? What's the song about if you, for you? What's the song about? It's you? about my, my heart's on fire because I'm in love with a girl. Really? That I can't get her out of my mind. And my, yep. every time I see her, my heart's on fire. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and then uh, we have this this other uh, uh, CD. Now, does that relate to what's going on in uh, yeah. over near Russia? Yeah. Let me let me explain yellow and blue. And I have okay. that yellow and blue. Yeah. I'm flying that flag on my flagpole at home, and I have yeah. been for two months now. Underneath the American flag, I might add. What, what it is, how this came about, is I was watching the Fox News. Right. And when the Ukraine war first started uh, with, with, uh, with the Russians there, and they had a segment where they showed some video of a woman with a baby I under her arm uh, carrying yep. a bag looking back right. at her house that was totally destroyed. Right, I, I remember And that, that touched me. And you know, uh, I, I, I felt bad because imagine walking out of your house with just a bag. Right. And that's all you have. Right, yeah, exactly. You don't have any money, you can't right. go to banks, you can't do anything, and right. that's all you have. You're just leaving, leaving everything. Your neighbors aren't there yep. or anything. So that, so that touched me. So I wanted to do something. So. I was in Florida at the time, and there's this big parking garage. Yeah. Uh, and it's a brand new state of the art parking garage. And on the side of it, they have lights. It's all lit up. Yeah. And yellow and blue. They had yellow and blue oh. because of this. So I went to bed that night thinking yellow and blue. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I got out of bed and I, and I wrote the song, Yellow and Blue. And it, the song uh, is, is really about a person that looks back at their neighborhood right. and their house, or if they're looking out the window right. of, 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 you know, of, all, of all in their house that's still standing, if yep. they were fortunate, and so all the destruction that around took place. Them. Yeah. So picture yourself looking around in, in Ukraine. At, at your old neighborhood. At your old neighborhood. So that's what this song is about. So what we did is, uh, what I did was I, I uh, contacted a friend of mine uh, who is a five-time Grammy Award-winning engineer. He does uh, a music for Justin Bieber and, and other people. And he has a studio in Florida. And we recorded the song in Florida. And, and we did a, a remix here in New, in, uh, New Jersey. Right. Uh, uh, with my other friend, can I mention his name? Yeah, of course. Rob, Rob Federici of Polygon Studios in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And the song was finished, and I created a website called yellowandblue.net. Yep. And uh, we have a Ukrainian uh, a church. It's, it's, it's uh, in... Uh, one socket, Rhode Island. Oh yeah, it's a yeah. Saint Michael's Ukrainian right. Orthodox Church. Right. And I called uh, uh, Father Boris Kruna is his name. And I said we'd like to, you know, help you out. Help you out. Right. You know, and uh, we also uh, have uh, the International Fellowship of Christian and Jews that you see the advertisements on TV. Sure. Well, well they're they're there in, in, in on this website too. So if anyone out there would like to help out in any help way, out, yeah. they could go to the website yep. yellowandblue.net. Yellow and, blue. and uh, it's, you know, and all the information is on it, on the website. So if you'd like to help yeah, there's out, a, it would be there's good. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of Ukrainians in yeah. that go to I the ha church. I have nothing to do with what goes uh, on with the website, only that I created the song and donated the song right. for the, for the uh, Ukrainian people. And if anyone likes the song, if they hear it once they go on the website right. or you, you, you listen to it, 
You could do whatever you want with the song for the, for that for those people. If you have any well, ideas, you could you could contact me personally at slackent.net. Uh, that's S L A C K E N T at Comcast.net. And if they want to use that song, yeah, right? yeah, uh, yes, uh, and and it's totally for the, f to, to help the, the Ukrainian people out because I feel bad. You know, I, you know, now it's really I, I, bad I, right over there right now. I mean, they're, they're getting pushed back. Now they're losing. Now, well, they're, now they're finally admitting how many Ukrainians are getting killed over there. I, I know, but you know, the, the, the news should do more than what they're doing. They, it's like a secondary topic now. If you look right. at the if, national news, you're, right. you're right. You know, they if, backed off on it. It, it. It's all this other. You know, the, the, the news lately isn't isn't good, but I, I don't I don't want to get into that. But, then, but anyway, uh, I think they should focus in more on what's what's going on between Ukraine and and, right. and, and Russia. Right. Right. So. Well, you see, think, you're seeing thousands and thousands of people getting yeah. killed over there. It's, and, it's not. Oh yeah, you know we got to talk about that. I would like to mention, Bob, you had Arrow Rose on your show. I a did a few weeks ago. Or about what a one nice month person, ago. a beautiful girl. Yep. And she this, moved. This, this is her CD. This is her new CD. Her new CD, damaged. Her new damaged. And as we speak, she's on a movie set in uh, South Carolina for the uh, uh, TV series on Netflix called Out of Banks. Really? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Isn't it funny? She moves from New Jersey, Jersey to California to end up on a movie set in, in the Carolinas. Yeah, well, well she's, she's, she's going to be going back to it yeah, no you know, after, yeah. after they get <laughs> filming. But she told me to tell you she, uh, uh, that she gave give you the CD. And, uh, uh, you know, she, I, I think that she... Uh, that kid's gonna go. Oh, through. I I believe she's, she's that gonna too. Go really, big, I believe that too. You know, she, she's a talented young lady. When you open that CD up and you take the actual CD out, there's a picture in in, in the back there, a, a, a terrific picture. It's really? a terrific picture. Well, this is a terrific picture too. Yeah, and you know, a gentleman that owns a music store in Ocean City. Okay, he wanted to be a photographer, but he but he runs a music store. Right. He's the one that took those pictures. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, Chris. Chris had grassroots, uh, grassroots? Uh, music. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, in, was in, in Ocean City. Yeah. And you know, was instrumental in her her success is her father. Yeah. Yeah. Her father's done. Um, I mean, she su he supports her like uh, moved to Cal moved to California with her. Well, let me say something really fast. Her, her father, she, uh, 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 Bill O'Connor. She'd be the father of the year. Yeah. Because Arrow's mother passed away in, in the uh, trade towers. On, on, on that's, that's right. Yeah. And he brought her up. He was a father and a mother for her. And he brought up a very good child. He did a hell of a job bringing her up. Wow. Yeah. So. Now, yeah. but is he her real father? Or yeah, real yeah. father. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, he, he supports her a thousand percent. Oh, he certainly does. Not a hundred percent, a thousand percent. Well, when she was small, he, he had yeah. her uh, learning music and learning how to play the piano and yeah. and uh, yeah. learning how to sing and taking singing lessons, yeah. dancing lessons, and all that other stuff. He he came over my my uh, my apartment uh, uh, one day and said, "My daughter writes, you know, lyrics, and you know, she, I think she's talented." I said, "Well, bring her over." I said, you know, I have a piano there. Right. So she sat at the piano, and Arrow started singing. It blew me away. Really? I never heard anyone sing like she sings. Yep. A lot of people think that she sounds like Ad Adele. Right. Uh, you know, she, she has that. But she has a way of singing that's very unique, the she, way she phrases. She reminds me a little bit about that girl from England there, who passed a few years back. Yeah, I know who you mean. Uh, uh, Whitehead was her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. I forgot her first what was name. Her name? Yeah. So, Amy Whitehead. Amy Whitehead. What, no, yeah. White House, right? White House. 
Wine house. Uh, wine house. <laughs> we were close. Oh, we were close. Oh, no, white hat. We were, we were close. Oh, that was my high school I math teacher. I took my glasses off for that. That was my oh, high school no. math teacher. <laughs> white hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's who, that, when I heard her sing, yeah. that's who, not totally, but kind of, you know, yeah, she got yeah. that, like, a little bit of a whine uh, yeah. to her voice, a little twang to her voice, right? Yeah. She got that little difference. And you know something? Aral doesn't have any music training. No. I said, don't take any lessons because the lessons will ruin School you. School you up, part, yeah. You know? Yep. And you know something? When she first went in, into uh, uh, the, the, uh, the studio to sing, you know, you gotta put the headphones on, you right. hear your voice simultaneously with the headphones on. You know, you gotta get a little used to that, okay? She never did that before. She hit the song right off. Really? Yeah, yeah. Very, very good. And this, uh, I don't wanna say it. All right, auto-tune, no auto-tune on her. That's her natural voice. Really? Yeah, she sings in tune. Yeah, totally in tune. And unlike, uh, uh, like you alluded to, auto-tune. I need auto-tune yep. at times. <laughs> oh, yeah. And most singers do. That's yeah. why most singers don't sound the same in concert as they do in person. I mean, on, that, a, on yeah. a tape. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah we're totally correct. I, yeah. The worst one I ever, and I, I recall over the decades, that I, concert I ever went to that didn't sound nothing like they sounded on a record yeah. was Three Dog Night. Three Dog Night, I, yeah. I thought it was totally different, and it was a real disappointment. Because, yeah. you know, you're expecting to hear the music you, you like and the song yeah. you liked, and mm -hmm. when they sang it, I'm saying, who's it? A bunch of three or four drunk guys just uh, got on a stage. You know, it yeah. didn't sound nothing like they, they should have sounded. Mm -hmm. And who was the best band you think that uh, sounded like they did in on the stage as they did in person? Who, who was... Uh, or some, any anyone, solo artist or or band, you think? Bon Jovi, a good one, good one. Bon Jovi, uh, uh, the Moody Blues, another good group, they yeah, good. another good one, yeah. My yeah. my favorite was the Bee Gees, as Bee Gees. far as far as sounding oh, Bee Gees, yeah, sounding exactly like yeah. they sound in. In the studio, yeah. they sounded on it. Well, that, that three-part harmony there, they had that down pat. Yeah. The Bee Gees. Yeah. Now, are you headed back to New Jersey now? Or are you hanging tomorrow, around Rhode Island for a little while? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah? But I'll be back in Rhode Island, so I, I, I come back. Now, how do we compare it. with the Italian uh, um, meatballs and everything? Let me tell you something. There's a place on Charles Street that I get spinach pies from. Yep. Uh, Jeanette's, you know what I'm talking What's about? What's it called? Jeanette's. Oh, oh yeah, well that's not on Child Street. That's not, it's, a, it's around the corner from it's Child around Street. Around the corner. Oh, you messed you me up. That's on, that's on Branch Avenue, yeah. the very beginning of Branch Avenue. And they sell out by 11 yeah. o'clock in the morning, yeah. they're done, yeah. you get none. Oh, I, I know, I go there and you sometimes- You can't get I anything like that down uh, no? in Jersey. Well, it's something close, on, you know, down, down yeah. in the Italian uh, market area there, but. But a pepper biscuit too? Can I get a pepper biscuit? None of that? No, no. Well, no. we're done. You we're just done. spent an hour with Bob. We All gotta right. go get some Italian. All right, let's go. Sausage let's, let's go get a meatball or sandwich. Veal parmesan <laughs> or something like that. One of the above. And thank you for spending an hour with Bob and thank you for spending an hour with Bob. And Gabriel. thank you for having me. I'm well appreciated. And another 30 years. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs>